Hello everyone! Today I am going to be answering a question that has been plaguing us since the beginning of time. Would the Pokemon professors be good, like, actual professors? <laughs> so the way this is going to work is I'm going to look at all of the main professors from the mainline games, including Pokemon Legends Arceus, or Arceus, or Arcus, however you want to pronounce it is fine and judging them based on four elements. Number one is their experience, so have they taught before? Number two is how they treat the player, because the player is a stand-in for their students. Number three is their setup, so what is their classroom like? Where do they do their teaching, and is it conducive to education? Do they have seating available? And number four is their personality or their vibes. What kind of professor would they be? But this isn't a super firm list, and every decision is my personal opinion, so I know how Pokemon fans get sometimes, so let's stay civil here. Uh, I am not judging the games, and I am not judging the actual pocket monsters themselves. I am judging the educational ability of our favorite tree-based characters. I've played a lot of Pokemon in my day, Pokemon is very important to me, and so this video is made with nothing but love for the franchise. Alright, let's go. Not like Pokemon, let's go Eevee and let's go Pikachu. Though that would be a good joke to make. It's too bad that I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> so we're starting off with good old Professor Oak. The Kanto Professor has been around since the very beginning, so there is a lot of stuff to work from as far as judging him. Professor Oak does have some teaching experience, which we learn about when Professor Elm says that he was taught by Oak at the university, which is probably referring to Celadon University. He has some experience, but in practice, he doesn't seem to treat the player very well. In the anime, he's scatterbrained and dismissive. Like when Ash tells him that he saw what turned out to be the legendary Pokemon Ho-Oh, Oak just totally brushes him off. If one of my students came to me with a wild and groundbreaking idea, I would give them the benefit of the doubt and at least hear them out. In the games, his track record is a little bit better. He's a little tough on the player character, but when you talk to him about your Pokedex as your work on filling it out, he gives you good, actionable advice. This is something that every good writing professor knows. When you give a critique, you need to make sure that it's actionable. Make sure that you tell the student what specifically they can do to improve, and Oak does exactly that. But on the other hand, he does also forget the name of his grandson, so I think that we can deduct some points for that. We're not doing a point system here. As far as his setup goes, we know that he taught at Celadon University, but there aren't any good interior shots of the university, so I think that we can just assume that it has the usual standard university classroom setup. Which isn't bad, but it's not great. But now that he is no longer at the university, he probably does most of his teaching out of his lab. Which could use some work. In the anime, his lab has one bookshelf, one couch, and a whiteboard. Now I like informal seating arrangements and small class sizes, but that is a bit much. And his lab in the games is even worse. There's lots of bookshelves, which is nice, but there are no chairs. I assume that all of these desks here are standing desks, because there aren't desk chairs, there's just no chairs in this whole place. And finally, a vibe check. Professor Oak is kind and has a soft demeanor. Even though he's a very famous and accomplished researcher, he doesn't have a huge ego. And he writes Pokemon poetry. How can I, a published poet, not give him points for that? Again, we're not doing a point system. I don't know why I keep... He's the kind of professor that's probably been around too long and is way past their heyday, but he has tenure and most of the students like him, even though he probably only teaches like two classes a semester, so the university just keeps him around. All told, I rank Professor Oak B tier, because while he is a good educator and he is knowledgeable about his field of study, he could be a little bit more respectful to his students and actually give them a place to sit when he's teaching them. Go buy some chairs, man. <laughs> Next up is our professor from the Johto region, Professor Elm. As far as experience, we don't know a ton. Most of what we do know about Elm is about his research, not about his teaching. This doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't have any teaching experience, but it also doesn't really inspire confidence. Elm is a bit of a know-it-all, and this affects how he treats the player. He always brings up his research and wants the player to be involved in it, and because he's so focused on research-related things, he often interrupts conversations to read emails or take phone calls. He's nice enough, if a little timid. 
Bulbapedia says that while he is incredibly knowledgeable, he's known to get into heated arguments with others over research and theories. He also tends to go into unnecessarily lengthy explanations whenever he's asked a question. These aren't exactly great qualities for a teacher to have. And on top of that, his official art shows him fumbling with books and papers falling out of his coat pocket. Those could be your papers that he still hasn't graded. <laughs> if you've ever had a professor who regularly lost your tests or forgot to grade your papers, you know how annoying that can be. It's never clear whether Elm taught at Saladon University. We know he was a student there and actually studied under Professor Oak, but we don't know much else. So the only setup we can judge is his lab. And it's bad. <laughs> it's worse than Oak's, because Elm's lab is just a little bit bigger, but still doesn't have any chairs. <laughs> and finally, the vibe check. Bulbapedia says that Professor Elm is regarded as sweet and kind-hearted by many, including New Bark Town's Nurse Joy. And honestly, if Nurse Joy, the light of my life, likes him, then he must not be that bad of a guy, right? Sometimes I wish Professor Elm would do some research in the area of human relationships, too. Nurse Joy! So, overall, Professor Elm seems a little irritating, a little pompous, and while he does seem nice, I'm gonna have to put him in C tier for actual educational value. He's that professor who cares way more about his research than about his students, and that doesn't make for a very good teacher. I'm so sorry. Up next is Professor Birch, the third generation Hoenn professor and my unproblematic dad bod fave. I love Professor Birch so very, very much, but I will try to be as objective as possible with my assessment. Bulbapedia says that Birch doesn't like teaching, but it also says that he's a very good mentor to students. Now, what that says to me is that he does his best teaching in a non-traditional classroom setting. And that jives with his classroom setup, too, because in both the anime and in the games, he does most of his teaching in the field. Like, sometimes literally in a field. <laughs> he does have a lab, and the lab has a single chair. So that's a step up from the earlier two professors, but because he doesn't have a classroom in the traditional sense, his teaching style leans into that idea of learning by doing. Grab any of the Pokeballs inside and hurry! Which I think is a great pedagogical philosophy, but also it doesn't necessarily work for all kinds of students. Birch is also high energy, and he talks to the player with a lot of pep and enthusiasm, which, again, is something some students might like and some students might not. You're angry! He's also written several books about Pokemon habitats, so pairing that enthusiasm with actual content knowledge is usually a great combination for teachers to have. All that said, he's also very cute and charismatic. Charismatic? What the fuck, Zoe? What? <laughs> He's also very cute and charismatic and charming, and maybe that says more about my taste in men than anything else, but I know that if I had Professor Birch, I would be sure to come to class and pay attention. So ultimately, I put him in A tier. He's not the best teacher, but he's still pretty good. He has some solid pedagogy backing up his methods, but it's just that his methods don't necessarily work for every student's learning style. Then we have the Gen 4 professor, Professor Rowan. He is a grumpy old man, but even grumpy old men can be good teachers. Rowan is the first professor who has teaching experience that's still ongoing. In the anime, he runs the Pokemon Summer Academy, which is an educational summer camp in the Sinnoh region. And this is great! It's hard to tackle something with as many moving parts as a summer camp for tweens. It's even described as an experience-based education, which, as you all may know, I absolutely love. But. Bulbapedia says he was strict when it came to punishing his students for misbehavior, but happily gave them credit for completing their tasks to a high standard. The strict punishments aren't great praxis, but having high standards isn't necessarily a bad thing. Basically, he just seems very old school. Like, it's not bad, it's just a little outdated. And this outdated pedagogy is reflected in how he interacts with the player, too. As Bulbapedia says, he has a stern personality that makes him seem intimidating and mean, but he's actually very kind and patient. As far as Rowan's classroom setup, he has the best resources so far. 
The Pokemon Summer Academy is a really great location, and it looks like an incredible place to do learning. I don't love the traditional rows of desks in the classroom, but compared to the setups of the other professors, it's incredible. Like, look, all of these desks have chairs. <laughs> Monumental. Groundbreaking. So Rowan has good experience and a great setup and a harsh, if well-grounded, approach to education. He is a grumpy old man, but he's a grumpy old man who is very intelligent and passionate about education. I might not love his methods, but I do have to admit, Professor Rowan is an A-tier educator. Up next is our Unova, or Unova, I don't know how it's pronounced, Professor, <laughs> Professor Juniper. She is the first main series professor to be a woman, and she's great. So for full transparency, I haven't played the Gen 5 games. Black and white are really the only ones that I haven't played at all, so I have no personal experience with Professor Juniper. But everything that I found out about her on Bulbapedia and in the anime was great. I couldn't find anything bad or even critical. Even her lab is great, like it has chairs, multiple chairs. <laughs> The only thing that was a low point is that she doesn't have any obvious teaching experience. But in the games and in the anime, she seems very attentive to the player and to Ash. She listens well, and when she responds, her responses are clear and kind and patient. She seems like the kind of teacher who really gives a part of herself to her students. The kind of teacher who, when you're talking to her, you feel like she really cares about what you're saying. While I was researching her, I found something that could be a positive or a negative, depending on how you look at it. But Ken Sugimori, the art director for Pokemon, thought that she was a New Yorker type, a real career woman. Professor Juniper is a girl boss, but like an unproblematic girl boss. <laughs> I need to do something very quickly. Ghastly, girl boss, g g gigalith, giraffe, or no. Ghastly, glaceon, girl boss. Is that, is that good? <laughs> Ghastly, glaceon, girl boss. <laughs> In the anime, it is shown that she is very busy, but that even though she has all this other stuff on her plate, she has her shit together and really takes care of Ash. She's kind and knowledgeable and gets stuff done. She's the kind of professor who gets a hundred student papers and still somehow gets them graded to you by the end of the week. She is S tier. She is the kind of teacher that I wish I could be. She is goals. <laughs> don't keep that in. I don't think people say goals anymore. Do people say goals anymore? <laughs> Next is Sycamore, our Gen 6 professor from Kalos. Pokemon X was the first... Can you hear the cat crying? I'm gonna have to let him in. It's, it's gonna have to happen. Hello, Dad. Come on. Next up is Sycamore, our Gen 6 professor from Kalos. Pokemon X was the first Pokemon game I purchased as a full adult human person, so this generation holds a special place in my heart. But while I think fondly of the Kalos region, I don't have many actual memories of Professor Sycamore himself. He wasn't very memorable, but as I did some digging to put this video together, I realized that that's because, as an instructor, he's very hands-off. Where Professor Juniper was very involved and attentive, Professor Sycamore was much more laid back, and this is seen in how he treats his past students as well. I don't know if the mic is picking up the purring, but he's on my lap and purring. See? <laughs> Why don't we have any good cat Pokemon? Like, they're all ugly. I think the Skitty line, it's so much better than the Pur Ugly line. <laughs> Sycamore does have evidence of past teaching experience, since there's an arc in the anime where a past student comes back and is like, 
edgy and traumatized and it's a whole thing. But when Sycamore sees his student and sees that he's having some emotional turmoil, Sycamore doesn't push him. He's not overbearing. He gives him space and time to work through all the stuff that he needs to work through. This can be a great educational method. It's not one that I use as a teacher and it's not one that I liked as a student, but I know that there are lots of students who prefer self-guided learning where the teacher is totally hands-off. So there is some sound pedagogy behind what he does. And his lab isn't bad. It has chairs. <laughs> But it is in a tower in Lumio City, and I find cities loud and distracting, so that's not for me. But I know that there are some people who wouldn't mind that kind of setting. Now, as far as vibes, he's young, he's charming, he's chill, he's attractive, and he knows it. He flirts with some of the female characters in the anime, and he cares so much about his appearance. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing, because let's be honest, when you have an attractive teacher, you pay more attention in class. He's gonna be very bad, I can tell. It's hard to decide where Sycamore belongs on the tier, because if I were judging him from a student's perspective, I'd put him in C tier or maybe B tier, because his teaching style just isn't what I like as a student. But as an instructor, I recognize that his teaching style is based in good pedagogical practices. It's just that those pedagogical practices don't necessarily work for every student. But this is a video about a professor judging other professors. So as a professor, I put him in A tier, but like A minus, like between A and B, but like just on the A side of that line. <laughs> Next up is Professor Kakui, the professor from the Alola region. And his entry is gonna be a little bit shorter, as are the following entries, just because these games didn't come out all that long ago, so there's not a ton of information to work from. That being said, Kakui himself is a pretty interesting character. He and his wife run a school in Alola, and his wife is also a professor, and honestly, I think a better professor, but I'm focusing on the mainline professors, so Professor Burnett, you're amazing, we love you, you're great. S tier, love it. <laughs> anyway, Kikui does have teaching experience at a school that has good facilities, and he also treats the player well. He's very nice, very funny, very energetic, and honestly, his depiction in the anime, love it. But Professor Kikui has what I call history teacher football coach energy. He's very charismatic, and it sounds like his classes would be super fun, but they wouldn't necessarily be intellectually rigorous. And this isn't because Kikui himself isn't intellectual. He is a professor that is very impressive, but he isn't a full-time professor. Because he's also a professional wrestler. So and that's really cool! He is the coolest of the Pokemon professors, and he's definitely the best person of the Pokemon professors. Like, I'd love to just go get a drink with him, but I think that he'd struggle to focus on his students when he also has to worry about his wrestling matches that he has coming up. For this reason, I put Professor Kikui in C tier. Which breaks my heart! I love Professor Kikui, I would love to just, like, hang out with him, but... As a professor, he's the one that students take to get an easy A. Which is fine. We need those kinds of professors. <laughs> Maybe we don't. I don't know. Cut that wherever you feel. Where, where, whatever your heart tells you. <laughs> Next is Professor Magnolia, and her entry was pretty hard to put together because she's the professor from Pokemon Sword and Shield, but honestly... She's barely in those games. Like, she's never there. She doesn't really do anything. We don't know a ton about her. We don't know her teaching experience. We don't know a lot about who she was as a professor back when she did professory things. We can make some guesses. Like, she's old, so she's probably one of those professors who has tenure, and so they can just sort of do whatever they want, and so their classes are, like, weird and fun and laid back. But those are all guesses. But what we do know we know what her lab looks like. Her lab is incredible. 
Her Pokemon lab is cozy. It has a library. It has a greenhouse or sunroom or whatever that glass bit is. Bless you. Either way, it's great. It's warm and sunny and beautiful and I love it so very, very much. I want to teach in this space. That is all that I want in my life is to teach in a place like that. <laughs> She's that tenured professor who doesn't do a lot of teaching anymore, but still just kind of like hangs out around the department and makes snarky comments about the administration because she doesn't give a shit. She can't get fired. So she is B tier simply for her incredible lab classroom and the wealth of experience and advice that she can offer to other instructors. We don't know whether she would be a good professor. So we just don't have enough information to rank her any higher than that. And then we have Sonia, who is actually the granddaughter of Professor Magnolia, and at the end of the game, she takes over from her grandmother to be the new professor of the region. And what's great is that we actually spend a ton of time with Sonia throughout the game, so we know a lot more about her than we did about her grandmother. We know that she hasn't done a lot of formal teaching. She mentors the player, but she just hasn't spent a lot of time in the classroom. We know that she's published a book, or is in the process of writing the book during the game, and she finally gets it published by the end of the game, so she clearly knows her subject area. And we also know that she is a young woman who's just trying to figure out what to do with her life. She's snarky and smart and doesn't take shit from other characters like Leon, and what's even better is that because she is taking over her grandmother's position, she also gets to take over her grandmother's lab. And as we know, the lab was kind of my favorite thing about Professor Magnolia. Now, I might be biased because... <sighs> Desmond, this is a recipe for disaster. Don't you sit on the keyboard? Oh. Now... Now, I might be biased because I was also a young teacher who didn't really know what she wanted to do with her life, but Sonia is definitely S tier. She doesn't have teaching experience, but all professors start somewhere. You have to start with no experience, that's how that works. But she probably will be a good teacher in the future because she's a good mentor, and she also chooses to be a professor. She wants this. She wants to be a good teacher. She just needs to be given the chance. And finally, we have Professor Laventon. He is the professor in Pokemon Legends Arceus, and we know basically nothing about him. We know that he's the only one in the region that knows anything about Pokemon, but that's pretty much it. So we're going to be ranking him based on his vibe check. Uh, and his vibes aren't great. <laughs> Throughout the game, he refers to the player character as my child, which is super creepy. Like, when you meet a literal child who falls out of a space-time rift in the sky, you don't immediately call them my child. Stop it. <laughs> Otherwise, he seems nice, but niceness can go too far and be too creepy if it's not done carefully. We all know of that weird old guy teacher who was a little too nice to his female students. For me, it was my calculus teacher. Uh, in high school and my poetry teacher in college. And the worst thing is that this world is just really dangerous. There are wild Pokemon everywhere, some of which are really powerful and huge, and you can literally die anytime you go outside. This just doesn't seem like optimal conditions for learning. <laughs> So I am putting him in D tier. He has no positive attributes except maybe being nice. But his lab is very cozy, and it does have chairs, lots of chairs, which is more than you can say for a lot of the other professors, so... You know what? S tier. S tier. Professor Laventon, perfect. No, can't, can do no wrong. So, what have we learned here? Well, we know that there aren't enough educational institutions in the Pokemon universe. We know that the people of Kanto and Johto don't know what chairs are. And we know that being a teacher is hard, and there is no single right way to do things. 
And we also know that I love Pokemon very, very much and will take literally any excuse to talk about it. <laughs> and I'm... And I know this video was... Ugh. Desmond, please. And I know that this video was a little different from the other ones that I've done, but I wanted to do something light and fun because I have some really big projects that are coming up here in the next couple months and some of them are related to trauma. Uh, and they're all very important and ambitious and exciting, but I just, I wanted to make some lighter stuff in the meantime to sort of balance it out uh, while I'm working on those. I also want to give a huge thanks to my patrons and members whose names you should see scrolling over here, probably. Uh, and I want to give a huge thanks, especially to a tasty snack, Adam, Al Swigert, Dylan, Robert Bradford, and Science Punk Sellout. Thank you all so very, very much. And finally, we have our patron poem of the video. For Criminal Pink, here is The Pilgrimage. She crawls across gravel, soft-bellied and wet. Behind her, a line of prismatic slime that dances iridescent when the light hits just right. Fat feelers mosey over stones and lead her home back to the cool and the damp and the dew that collects on her skin in the mornings. That matriarch of mucus and all the trolls in the mud, she paints rainbows on the sidewalk for us to find in the moonshy evenings of May. And until next time, stay safe, stay warm, and I will see y'all again soon, I hope. Bye, folks. You're purring very loudly. I know I love you so much. I do. I do. Oh, kidok. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs>